In this video, we're going to be talking about the miraculous end-fed half-wave antennas, why they're so popular, and why we love them. We're Mike and Becky, the ham radio duo, and you'll usually see us outdoors, hiking, and playing radio. But why do we like this one, and what are some of the possible downsides? And if they're so popular, why are they controversial? In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into end-fed half-waves with a lot of the different technical details. And we're going to leave links in the description below in case you want to nerd out like we did. First off, what is an in-fed half wave? We're going to go over the basics and compare those basics to the dipole. Probably the most classic uh, antenna and a great one to use as a reference. Let's do it. So here's our collection of in-fed half waves. The reason they're so popular is they're really easy to put up. They don't require a tuner and you can use them on multiple bands. It makes it really great to play radio when you're outdoors. Like us. <laughs> you just connect one side to your radio with or without a coax, put the other side up on a mast or a tree branch, horizontal, inverted V, you get the idea. Basically, it's very forgiving. And regarding multiple bands, an in-fed half wave that is cut for the 40 meter band will resonate on the 40 meter band that you cut it for, but also the 20 meter band, and then oftentimes the 15 meter band and the 10 meter band. More on that in a little bit, but we've had fantastic luck with these antennas, making contacts all over the world with just five watts QRP. Uh, so there is a lot to love, but there's a lot to think about too when you get into the details. So let's dive in. So as the name implies, an in-fed half-wave antenna is a half wavelength of wire for whatever band that you want to use it on. So for instance, the very popular 40 meter band, a half wavelength would be roughly 66 feet. That means that you'd need 66 feet of wire to resonate right at seven megahertz or so for the 40 meter band. That's perfect, right? Well, if you only use 66 feet of wire and nothing else, it'll resonate right at that frequency, but it'll be about 1500 to 2000 ohms on your radio, not the perfect 50 ohm match that your radio wants to see. So to fix that, you just add a transformer and the transformer gives you the best of both worlds. You get the resonant right where you need it, with just a half wavelength of wire um, and the impedance will match the antenna using that transformer to your radio right at uh, a, about a perfect 50 ohm match. So to put it simply, to make it resonate on the band and frequency you want, you cut the wire to a very specific length, but you need a transformer in order to bring the SWR down to make the radio happy. And then you have resonance and a low SWR. Now a quick comparison with the classic dipole. The dipole is a classic antenna because it's performance, simplicity, and reliability. Here's a simplified diagram of a dipole. It's also made up of a half wavelength of total wire. So it's roughly the same 66 feet or so for a 40 meter dipole. The difference is you have a quarter wavelength going in one direction and a quarter wavelength going in the other direction. There's no transformer or loading coil needed. Unlike an in-fed half wave, it naturally has about a 50 to 70 ohm impedance to make your radio happy without a matching transformer. And the dipole is a great antenna to compare to other ones because it's naturally very efficient, meaning that you barely lose any of your radiated power. Also, it has a very predictable broadside radiation pattern. As you can see from the diagram, it's easy to imagine exactly what direction your power is going. And a lot of people say that they love dipoles for the simple fact that it's really hard to do better than a dipole and they're so simple. Right. So in other words, in simple, you're going to cut the same wire, but this one's not only going to resonate where you want it, it's going to have its own low SWR. And now we're talking about efficiency and it's going to be efficient all by itself. But with a dipole, it's a lot more work to deploy. This is a fantastic dipole from Soda Beams. Um, and it still takes quite a bit more effort to put up than uh, uh, in-fed halfway. And for us, doing a lot of outdoor adventures and going hiking where weight and everything else matters a lot. Uh, it's it super nice to just be able to toss it up in a tree or on a mast. And speaking of that, we're gonna quickly go over some of the advantages of the specific infant half wave configurations that we've got right now. There's a lot of great ones, but we'll just introduce these to, so we can talk about the differences. At the top right, we have the in K6 ARK um, in-fed half wave. We have the Reliance uh, antennas, Bug Out Mini. We have the DigiRigs uh, Digitenna, which I think is relatively new. And then the uh, Xtenna uh, in-fed half wave. Now let's talk about some of the differences. So the K6ARK antenna is really neat. The transformer is actually built right into there, which I built this myself, and does not require a counterpoise or ground wire. And this can plug directly into your radio. Yeah, and before you leave a comment saying, how does that work? You have to have a coax as the counterpoise. 
I think that the way that it works is when you plug it into your radio, your radio and maybe you become the counterpoise. Now we're talking about the Reliance Antennas Bug Out Mini. We specifically got the one with the same connector so we could use it in the same way and we have tested it a bunch and it works very similarly. This is the new one that we just caught from DigiRig, the Digitenna. And this one has the transformer on this side over here built in. And then you're gonna use a coax with this one, so it kind of helps with where you deploy it. It's a little more forgiving, you can kind of put it anywhere. Yeah, and the neat thing about this one is it's one of the spool antennas. They seem to be pretty popular these days. Um, and it has a really cool slip knot on it so that you can quickly tune it just by sli sliding the, the knot. And I really, really, really love this wire antenna. It doesn't get tangled, so the, the wire material on that one is awesome. And then this one is a X tenna. The cool, this one's very similar to the pack tenna in form factor. It's got the built-in transformer and you can use it as its own wire winder. We don't do that with ours. The cool thing about this is it has a switch on it. to you can, It has three different choices for the number of, of turns for the transformer. So you can play with each one of those when you get it set up to see what gives you the best match. And you can also really easily attach different lengths of wire. So if you want to be a little more efficient, you can cut it for the wire that you want to use for that band. These three right now are all cut for the uh, 20 meter band. So that's the fundamental frequency. And that's normally the way that we use them. And now back to the end fed half wave. Given that it's super simple to deploy, does not require a tuner, and it works on multiple bands, what's not to love? And that's the real purpose of this video. We're gonna get into the nerdy details now. First, we're gonna talk about some terms that get used interchangeably all the time. And it really did take me a while to understand the differences. Resonance, low SWR, and efficiency. And the dipole has all three, but the NFED half wave is different, and that's what we're gonna talk about. It's complicated. Resonance simply means it's electrically the right length for the band that you wanna use it on. So for instance, a wire cut for 40 meters is going to be resonant on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters. But just with the wire, and that's all, it doesn't mean it's gonna be good for that band. And that's because of what we're gonna talk about next, which is having a low SWR. Like we talked about earlier, if you just have a half wavelength of wire, you're gonna have a really high impedance, like 1500 to 2000 ohms. And uh, amateur radios are built to, to have about 50 ohms to make the radio happy. And that's what the SWR measures. And so that's why you need to have that transformer on an in-fed half wave. And I think a lot of people chase a low SWR thinking it makes their antennas great, but it's really just to make your radio happy. Yeah, and so the converse is true also. So a great example is a dummy load. So a dummy load is gonna be exactly 50 ohms so that it makes your radio happy so that you can test things, but it's a terrible antenna. Um, it's not meant to be able to radiate out at all. You're not supposed to use it as an antenna, even though we learned uh, in a fun experiment that it kind of works if you're local, but anyway. Yeah. Like uh, 10 feet away, it might work. <laughs> yeah, but in general, a dummy load is obviously a terrible antenna, um, but it has a perfect SWR. So just something to keep in mind when you're chasing a low SWR by itself. But if it resonates exactly where you want it, and it has a low SWR, then what is it that you're missing that you need next? Efficiency. Efficiency is power that becomes RF radiation. So basically, how well is your signal getting out there? And there are several things that can decrease the efficiency from wire losses, coil losses, ground losses, but really importantly, in the case of the NFED half wave, the transformer losses. So with a dipole, your efficiency can be around 95 to 98%, which is awesome. An in-fed half wave, on the other hand, is roughly 60 to 85% uh, efficient, depending on some factors we're gonna talk about in a minute. But that means that you're losing like 15 to 40% of your power. Uh, it's most efficient on its fundamental frequency. It can be about 70 to 85% efficient. Like for instance, if you cut it for 40 meters when you're using it on 40 meters. So that's pretty darn good and you can still use it on other bands without a tuner and without switching antennas, which is really convenient, but it is less efficient when you're using it on those other bands. Another big point about the NFED half wave is the quality of the transformer and specifically how it's built. There's a lot that goes into building a transformer, including how you wind the transformer itself, as well as what the core is made out of. Yeah, and just a really quick for instance, the material that the core is made out of uh, makes it better for different bands. So the same core is probably not gonna work across all the bands from like 160 meters all the way up to 10 meters. 
the core that you would want to use for like the lower bands like 40 meters 80 meters and 160 meters would be different for one that you would want to use for like 40 to 20 and then once you get up into like 15 and for sure 10 you might want to use a different core right and then the last part about efficiency is the radiation pattern so with a dipole, you have a very predictable, like broad side figure eight type pattern from the side of the dipole. So it's kind of easy to imagine, you know, where you're getting out to and kind of where your antenna is quote pointed, so to speak. On an NFED half wave, it's more complicated than that when you're using something other than the uh, fundamental frequency. So let's say that you have an NFED half wave that's cut for 40 meters, and then you're using on another frequency like 20 meters or 10 meters or something like that. Um, it actually has stronger currents at different points in the wire, and so your radiation pattern is more complicated. So in the end, what that means is it, like, it's not a bad thing because there might be some spots where the radiation pattern is very, very strong and you might get really good contacts, but it's like rolling the dice a little bit more because you've got some low points that are almost like nulls at different spots of the antenna, so you're not just broadly getting out there. So like the thing to remember is just that the radiation pattern on an infed half wave when you're using something other than the fundamental frequency is complicated. So what does this boil down to for the infed half wave? Basically, it can be a great antenna. If it's built well with a good core for the band that you want to use it on, you're using it on its fundamental frequency, it can be about 85% efficient, which is pretty darn close to the dipole, which is hard to beat. And where it really shines is convenience. Being able to deploy it so super quickly, being able to use it without a tuner, including on multiple bands, even if there's a little bit of an efficiency compromise on those other bands, without having to take down the antenna and put up another one. And that's the reason why NFED half waves are so popular. In the end, we've tried lots of different antennas, some that are really efficient and some that aren't. But in the end, we're still out having fun, making contacts, and I think that's what it's all about. Yeah, it doesn't stop us from having contacts, and a lot of times for us it's about the practical uh, aspect of, you know, if we have time to play radio and we just use what we've got, and sometimes we like to nerd out and find out all the nerdy details just kind of so that we know a little bit more about our options when we're making a choice, but we really don't try to uh, overthink it. We just yep. get out there and have fun. And if you got anything out of this video, please check and see if you're subscribed. Uh, if you're not subscribed already, please do so. It's an easy way to be able to support us that doesn't cost you anything at all, and it really does help. Yeah, they say like, subscribe, and leave a comment. <laughs> We'd love to hear from you. Yes. Thanks for watching. 73.